Hi everyone, it's Chandani and welcome to my channel. Thanks for being here. I recently went through the process of applying to grad school and as someone who never really thought that they would go to grad school, it was quite the learning experience. And so in this video, I figured I'd share a little bit about specifically the GRE and how I approached it, how I studied for it, how I managed to do well, and just about the exam in general. Um, I'm hoping to do future videos regarding different parts of the application process and how I chose the school that I ended up going with, which is Georgetown University. So you might be familiar with the GRE already. Chances are if you're applying to grad school, you probably are. Um, it's pretty similar to the SAT if you took that in high school. The exam consists of a two, two verbal sections, two math sections, and an essay. So pretty familiar if you've taken the SAT. There's also another additional section that could be either verbal or math. And usually this is like sort of just an experimental section. The test takes around four hours in total to complete and usually you can take it online or in a test site near you. I opted to take it at a test site near my house just because I didn't want to have the stress of relying on my own Wi-Fi. Um, you know, if your Wi-Fi goes out, then you would have trouble with, you know, completing the examination and it might be a little bit difficult for you. So I opted to go to the test site just because I thought that, you know, I don't want the technical difficulties to be in my hands. And I also felt that, you know, being in a testing environment where there are multiple other people also taking exams would kind of like help you get in that zone versus being in your home where you relax and, you know, you watch TV. And so just getting that mindset is something that's really important i feel for test taking so these days a lot of colleges actually waive the gre requirement um, for you know the pandemic as well as just a lot of colleges are now seeing this as maybe like an outdated method of actually evaluating someone which yeah it is but i opted to take the gre just because i didn't have the best gpa from my undergraduate school i did an engineering degree and so it was very challenging for me and so my GPA was just not as strong as I would have liked it to be going into the grad school application process. So I would say for someone who wants to bolster other aspects of their GPA or of their application that might not be super great right now then the GRE could still be a good option for you just because you know performing well on that test means that you know, you can study, you can do well in an examination, you can have discipline, you can work towards a goal that you have. And I think that shows a lot in terms of your grad school applications. So what was the timeline like? Like knowing that I wanted to apply to grad school and take the GRE, uh, what was the timeline specifically for me of, you know, when did I start studying? When did I start my applications and everything like that? So I would say that I kind of thought about applying to grad school for a while before I started even doing any work towards it. That was just because I had a lot of doubt as to whether or not I would get into a grad program. I had a lot of like limiting beliefs about like the fact that I don't belong in a grad school program. So I had a lot of that to work through. But once we got through that a little bit, I started seriously studying for the GRE around June of 2021. And you know, the typical school application cycle is pretty similar to an undergrad application cycle. Um, you submit your applications in the fall and you typically hear back like in the spring or earlier than that if it's like a rolling admissions process. So um, keeping that in mind, I started studying for the GRE in June. And at this point, I didn't really have a date in mind for when I wanted to take the GRE. I was kind of just taking it at my own pace figuring out how to study for the exam and how I wanted to approach it, like what works the best for me and figuring out like how long I would actually need. So I would say the first couple months of my studying were pretty surface level, just like reviewing information, not working super diligently and not really following a plan. I mean, I was studying um, almost every day or at least two or three times a week, but I didn't really have a plan, you know, as to what are the skills that I want to improve on and how do I want to go about practicing those skills and improving them. 
So, you know, for the month of June, I was kind of doing that and decided, you know, that that really wasn't working for me. I was not being super diligent because I didn't sign up for an exam yet. So it was kind of like open ended and felt like I could keep pushing back like my deadlines and my study schedule. And so I quickly found that I needed to commit to a deadline for taking the exam and just work on a plan to study towards that date. So now that it was like the end of June, beginning of July, I figured that I would give myself three months and take the exam in October. And so I chose a date in mid-October to take the exam. So now I had three months, July, August, September, to really prepare for the exam and make sure that I was you know, doing it based on the skills that I needed to improve and making sure I had a solid plan to move forward. That being said, in July and August, I did a lot of practice using like practice books, you know, stuff that you find at the library most of the time is what I use. I also use the official ETS prep book, which was super helpful because the, that is the company that gives the exam. So a lot of the questions in those books and a lot of the information in those books is pretty closely matched to what you'll find on the exa uh, actual examination. Of course, like I started off doing a diagnostic exam after I studied a little bit and um, just to see like where I was and my score was obviously not where I wanted it to be but that really helped me in figuring out you know where was I struggling where did I need to improve I know it can seem intimidating to do a diagnostic exam especially if you're like I'm just gonna fail this like I have not studied for an exam in years like I don't want to do that I feel you, I was totally there myself, but it is really helpful to figure out like what are the areas that you need to improve and where do you need to, you know, really focus your time and energy. So I did the diagnostic exam from the ETS GRE prep book, which I'll put a link down below to all the resources that I used in case you want to buy them. I just bought mine on Amazon. And then I went through all the material in that book, you know, reviewed stuff that I was getting wrong and that book does come with two practice tests. I would say use one for your diagnostic exam and save one until like the very end. Um, the second one, I think I took maybe like a week or two weeks before my exam just because it is helpful to have actual ETS prep materials to go off of because a lot of the other companies that do have GRE preparation books are helpful and I did use them for certain things like vocabulary or certain like concept um, review but in terms of practice questions you don't really get better than the official ETS material. So I took the diagnostic exam, I was studying a little myself and around maybe mid-July, beginning of August, I was like I just want to be able to do more practice. I one thing about me is that I feel like practice is the best way that I get good at things. Um, maybe that's true for a lot of people, not just me, but the main thing I learned in college was how I best study and that's by doing practice after practice and reviewing those things and making sure that I'm learning from the mistakes that I make. And so I really wanted to see out more practice questions. So how did I do that? I obviously took to the internet and was looking up, you know, GRE study resources, just Googling, looking on YouTube and seeing what I could find. And I quickly stumbled across this website called gregmat.com where this um, tutor named Greg, he offers like one month as well as like three month GRE preparation courses where you have where he provides a lot of material that you can go through a lot of practice a lot of lectures as well as like live zoom lectures where you can like ask him questions and stuff and he also offers a lot of um techniques for approaching specific problems that are common on the exam which was very helpful and so this instantly piqued my curiosity and the kicker is that it was only five dollars a month so like i was like you know what five dollars like that's nothing i will pay that and see what he has to offer because a lot of you know other gre prep courses tend to be you know hundreds of dollars if not more than that and so five dollars a month i was like okay that's not a lot for me to like lose i'm just gonna put five dollars in for this month and see how it goes so around mid um 
August I signed up for a Greg mat and it was the best thing I could have done for my GRE studying. I loved the way that he taught the material. He had amazing techniques for approaching specific questions on the exam and he really was able to turn my score like around. Like I was quickly like feeling like I was doing better at these practice problems and building my confidence. So yes, this is like my holy grail resource that I will recommend to anybody doing the GRE and have in the past and they have also loved it. The main thing that Greg does really well is he provides you with practice questions and he goes through strategies for how to approach questions on the exam, which is really invaluable when it comes to taking an exam like this because those are really the things that you need and you know being able to recognize different types of questions and then have strategies in your tool belt for how to approach those different questions is extremely helpful he also has a essay format that is you know very well thought out well structured that you can use to tackle the essays and this is what helped me get a pretty good score on my essay as well through Greg Matt, I also found the big book of GREs, which is basically just a practice book of seven or eight past GRE exams. So these exams are pretty old, but they come from ETS themselves. So they were very helpful in terms of the type of questions that you will see on the exam. And they're just, I think, a better source for practice questions than other books that you might find by other brands and not directly from ETS. So like I said, he offers one month or two month or three month prep courses. I opted for the one month because basically I was just like, I'm going to knock this out in September right before the exam and um, hope that my score gets to where it needs to be. And thankfully it did. So apart from that, Greg also recommends getting these other two ETS books, which are basically just focused on verbal and quant and they just have a lot of practice questions additionally as well. So I got these as well off of Amazon. So for the entire month of September, I basically focused on Greg Matt, all of his you know resources, went through his lectures, did all the practice problem, learned all the strategies, and really focused on just following his plan for the entire month of September. And then when October rolled around, my actual examination date was coming up. I took that last prep um practice exam from the gre ets book i took you know some exam from the big book of gres that i was saving really recreating the test environment in my home helped me to prepare for the amount of stamina that it takes to take the gre which i feel like a lot of people don't really touch on at least for me it was it's hard to concentrate for four hours in a row and so having that environment where i was recreating the test environment in my home i was taking the gre practice exam back to front like pretty much every week for a few weeks leading up to the exam really helped me build that stamina for being able to sit for four hours in exam being able to concentrate for four hours in exam like these things are also just as important as the material because you know, if you just randomly out of the blue take a test for four hours, you know, you're gonna get tired by like hour two or three. Like, it is hard to focus for that long, especially, you know, in this day and age where like, I feel like our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. So I would say that's another like thing that I really recommend people do is do a lot of practice tests and do it as if you are in that testing environment like sit down for the entire four and a half hours and take the test from front to back okay so you might be thinking like okay yeah this is all well and good she used this she used that but like how long did i actually study every single day and so that is a great question like for me i would say i started off pretty gradually like i said in june and july like I was sort of just like dipping my toe in, like figuring out what the GRE was, what I needed to work on, how much I think I needed to study, and just like figuring out what my plan is gonna be and how I'm going to approach the rest of my like study plan and the exam in general. And then once I got a good idea of that, like late July, August, September, I was putting in the work, you guys. I was putting in like at least three hours a day um 
on most weekdays going from at least two to four hours a day um that was just what worked for me and how much work i put in and how much time i had to put in you know like i did have a full-time job at the time but i my hours were good i was living at home and so i had a lot of things taken care of for me so i know that you know this might not be the situation that you're in but you that you might not be in a situation where you can spend like that amount of time every single day but if you are in that situation i would say just you know take it slow give yourself time like you know you might not need as much time to study as i did or and if you do or if you need more time like and you don't have that you know start with like an hour a day or like even half an hour a day like where you could fit it in because everything really does make a difference and as long as you're giving yourself that time you will do well on the exam so that's just how it was for me i studied pretty seriously from july through september and that's how much work that i put in personally to be able to score a 325 on the exam i was really happy with that score i that was my target score and i had only scored that like once when i was doing the practice exam so you know don't be scared like you can do it it is possible to get towards your dream score i mean i know that that's not like a perfect score by any means but this is what worked for me and i ended up getting into like most of the programs that i applied to that i wanted to go to and so it worked out and um, it'll work out for you as well i'm sure i hope this information helped you in your process to start studying I hope this information helped you in your process to start studying for the GRE. I know that it can seem a little bit intimidating and scary and daunting, and it is like all sort of open-ended things that you have to do and structure for yourself. It can be, but um, just know that, you know, people have done it before. There are proven like strategies and things that you can do to do well on the exam. and. You'll be great. You can ask anyone around me. Before I took the exam, I was a literal mess. I was, you know, crying, thinking that I wasn't gonna do well, that I wasn't gonna get into any grad program. And I can say confidently, like looking a year back, that was very dramatic of me. I like I did not have to be that stressed out and anxious about it, but you know, at least I got to the place that I wanted to go. So and I'm confident that you can too. So I hope these tips helped you and let me know what strategies and things worked for you in the comments below. I'm super curious. I always have, you know, friends, siblings and stuff asking me about like what I used to study. And so I'm always looking for other things that I can recommend to people. Thank you all and I'll see you soon.